Form 2 essays 1. Describe how the mammalian body protects itself against. Pathogenic microbes are found on the skin, respiratory tract, mouth, vagina, and the intestinal tract. The skin has a keratinized and waterproof cornified outer layer that provides a mechanical barrier to microbes slash prevents entry of microbes. Sebaceous gland produces sebum, which has antiseptic properties. The respiratory tract produce mucus secretions that trap dust. Cilia sweep slash waft slash propel the microbes to the pharynx for swallowing or to be coughed out. Reflex actions of coughing slash sneezing slash vomiting help remove foreign materials from the respiratory tract slash digestive tract. Lysozymes slash enzymes in saliva slash nasal secretions slash tears, digest walls of bacteria destroying them. Gastric secretions such as hydrochloric acid lowers the pH in the stomach killing microorganisms. Clotting of blood, prevents entry of microbes after damage of blood vessels. Phagocytosis, by phagocytes engulf and destroy microbes and other foreign bodies. Lymphocytes are stimulated to produce antibodies, by proteins present in microbes protecting the body. Antibodies destroy slash kill microorganisms through various ways, agglutinins, bind to pathogens making them clump together, killing them. Lysins, bind to pathogens and make them burst or disintegrate. Opsonins, bind to pathogens making them easily recognized hence be engulfed slash destroyed by other lymphocytes. Antitoxins, bind and neutralize toxins produced by microorganisms. Vagina is acidic, hence making it not conducive for growth and reproduction of microorganisms. 2. Outline and explain the various homeostatic functions of the liver in mammals. Deamination process of removal of an amino group from an amino acid molecule, the process gets rid of excess amino acids in the body, as the body is not able to store them. The amino group enters the ornithine cycle, where it is combined with carbon, 4, oxide to form urea, which is excreted in urine through the kidney. Heat production, many metabolic activities take place in the liver, releasing heat energy, that is distributed by the blood to other parts of the body, this helps in thermoregulation, storage of vitamins and mineral salts. Vitamins A, B, D, E and K, are stored in the liver, worn out red blood cells, are broken down to yield iron, which is stored in the liver in form of ferritin. This is used later in case of shortage, formation of red blood cells. Occurs in the liver of the foetus, the liver also breaks down old slash exhausted red blood cells, leading to formation of more in the bone marrow to replace the worn out cells. To enhance oxygen and carbon, 4. Oxide distribution, regulation of blood sugar level. Liver cells convert excess glucose into glycogen and fats under the influence of insulin hormone, the stored glycogen is however converted back to glucose, when glucose levels are low, by the liver cells. Under the influence of glucagon hormone, regulation of plasma proteins. Plasma proteins such as prothrombin and fibrinogen are manufactured in the liver using the amino acids found in the liver, they play a major role in blood clotting. That prevents excessive blood loss and infection at the injured area, other plasma proteins produced by the liver such as serum and albumin, contribute to the maintenance of osmotic pressure in the body, non-essential amino acids are also synthesized by the liver, for use by the body. Storage of blood, the liver is highly vascularized, hence it is capable of holding a large volume of blood when the blood vessels dilate during hot conditions, when the temperatures are low. The blood vessels constrict under the influence of the endocrine and nervous systems, hence less blood is stored in the liver, this contributes to thermoregulation. Detoxification, this is the process where harmful compounds such as drugs and poisons, are converted to less toxic compounds in the liver, toxicity is caused by medication, drugs, and microorganisms. The toxic compounds are later excreted in urine, detoxification prevents the accumulation of toxins in body cells, which could lead to death or malfunctioning of the body cells. 3a. What is homeostasis? Mechanisms of control and maintenance of a constant internal environment regardless of the external conditions. B. Name any three factors that must be maintained constant in mammalian bodies. Temperature, water, salt or ion content, carbon, 4. 
B. Name any three factors that must be maintained constant in mammalian bodies, temperature, water, salt or ion content, carbon, 4, oxide, glucose, amino acids. C. Explain how endotherms respond to heat and cold conditions in their environment. Heat slash hot conditions, increased sweating, to lose heat through latent heat of vaporization, dilation of arterioles under the skin, to bring more blood to the skin surface to lose heat to the atmosphere, decreased body metabolism, to reduce heat generation, erector pili muscles relax, making hair follicles to relax hence hair lies flat on skin, no air is trapped, to lose heat, slow slash reduced muscular activity due to slow metabolism, to reduce heat production, panting to expose tongue and mouth, to release heat, moving to shades to avoid direct heat, estivation, to escape the extreme heat, flapping of ears to create currents to carry away heat, cold conditions, stamping of feet, to generate heat, basking in the sun to gain heat directly, less production of sweat, to reduce water loss through latent heat of vaporization, vasoconstriction of arterioles, hence less blood flow to the skin surface to reduce heat loss, increased metabolism through release of more thyroxine hormone, to generate heat, erector pili muscles contract, pulling hair follicles hence hair is raised, to trap a layer of moist air, to prevent heat loss, shivering slash rapid contraction of muscles, to yield heat to warm body. 4. Describe the route taken by water from the soil up to the evaporating surface of a plant. Water is drawn into the root hair cells by osmosis, due to the presence of dissolved substances in the cell sap of root hairs. The concentration of cell sap is greater than that of the surrounding solution in the soil slash concentration gradient, this exerts a higher osmotic pressure, thus drawing the water molecules across the cell wall and cell membrane into the root hair cells. More water drawn into the root hair cells dilutes the cell sap, making it less concentrated than that in the adjacent cortex cell of the root. Due to osmotic gradient, water moves from the adjacent cells to the next by osmosis, until it enters the xylem vessels located in the center of the root. The xylem vessels of the root then conduct the water up into the xylem vessels in the stem into the leaves. There is a force in the roots which pushes water up the stem, this force is known as root pressure, and can be considerably high in some plants. Energy from the endodermal cells of the root is responsible for driving this force, in the xylem vessels, water would rise up by capillarity, to some extent because the vessels are narrower and there is a high attractive force between the water molecules and the cell walls, the cohesive, and adhesive forces are important in the maintenance of a continuous and uninterrupted water column in the xylem vessels up the tree to the leaves, water vaporizes from the spongy mesophyll cells, their cell sap becomes concentrated than the adjacent cells. This increases the osmotic pressure of the spongy mesophyll cells, as a result of this, water flows into the cell from other surrounding cell, which in turn takes in water from xylem vessels within the leaf veins. This creates a pull slash suction force that pulls a stream of water from xylem vessels in the stem and roots. This force, known as transpiration pull, helps in maintaining a continuous column of water from the roots to the leaves, water flows from the midrib into leaf veins from where it enters leaf cells. From the mesophyll cells, it enters the airspace. 5. How is the mammalian heart adapted to its functions? Heart is enclosed in a pericardial membrane slash pericardium, that produces a fluid, to lubricate it, the membrane also keeps the heart in position, it is covered in a fatty layer, that acts as a shock absorber, made up of cardiac muscles, which are interconnected slash interacted hence contract and relax without fatigue or nervous stimulation slash myogenic, for continuous pumping of blood throughout the lifespan of the animal. The muscles are supplied by nutrients and oxygen, by the coronary arteries, and the coronary veins take away wastes and carbon. 4. Oxide. Heart is divided into four chambers, for efficient double circulation slash avoid mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood slash carry large volume of blood, has interventricular septum, to separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, ventricles are thick slash muscular, to generate high pressure to pump blood out of the heart, left ventricle has thick muscle slash more muscular, to pump blood to all body tissues, heart has bicuspid, and tricuspid, ventricles are thick slash muscular, 
to generate high pressure to pump blood out of the heart. Ventricles are thick slash muscular, to generate high pressure to pump blood out of the heart. Left ventricle has thick muscle slash more muscular, to pump blood to all body tissues. Heart has bicuspid, and tricuspid valves, to prevent backflow of blood to left auricle, and right auricle respectively. Valves have tendinous cord slash valve tendons, to prevent them from turning inside out. Semilunar valves located at the beginning of major arteries, prevent backflow of blood into the ventricles. Has sinoartrio node located in the muscles of the right auricle, to initiate heartbeat slash contractions of heart muscles slash cardiac muscles, rate of heartbeat is controlled by nerves, vagus nerve, slows down heartbeat, while sympathetic nerve, speeds up the heartbeat, has aorta, to transport oxygenated blood to all body parts, has pulmonary artery, that transports deoxygenated blood from right ventricles to lungs for oxygenation, has pulmonary vein, that transports oxygenated blood from lungs to the left ventricles, for distribution to all body parts, has the vena cava, that receives deoxygenated blood from all body parts to right ventricles. 6. Describe double circulation in mammals deoxygenated blood from body tissues, except lungs, enters the heart via the right auricle, through the vena cava, it flows to the right ventricle, via the tricuspid valve, the right ventricle contracts, pumping blood, via the semilunar valves, through the pulmonary artery, to the lungs for oxygenation, the oxygenated blood from the lungs, flow through the pulmonary vein, to the left auricle, via the bicuspid valve, to the left ventricle, the left ventricle contracts, pumping blood via the semilunar valves, through the aorta, to the rest of the body tissues. 7. Describe the process of urine formation in the mammalian kidneys. The afferent arteriole which is a branch of the renal artery supplies blood to the glomerulus, the afferent arteriole has a wider lumen slash diameter than the efferent arteriole, which takes away blood from the glomerulus. The differences in the diameter of the afferent and the afferent vessels causes high pressure, leading to ultrafiltration of blood, the walls of the blood capillaries are one cell thick, hence glucose, amino acids, vitamins, hormones, salts, creatine, urea, and water filter into the Bowman and Arsquo, S capsule, to form glomerular filtrate, white blood cells, red blood cells, plasma proteins such as globulin and platelets are too large to pass through the capillary wall, hence remain in the blood capillaries. Useful substances in the human body are selectively reabsorbed, back into the bloodstream at the proximal convoluted tubule, the tubule is highly coiled, to increase the surface area for reabsorption of the substances, the useful substances include amino acids glucose, vitamins, hormones, sodium chloride, and water, many mitochondria found at the proximal convoluted tubule, provide energy for reabsorption of these substances against a concentration gradient, the glomerular filtrate flows into the descending and the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Blood in the capillaries and the glomerular filtrate in the loop of Henle move in opposite direction slash counter current flow, this provides a steep concentration gradient that leads to maximum absorption of water through osmosis. Sodium chloride is actively absorbed from the ascending limb into the blood capillaries, under the influence of aldosterone hormone, the glomerular filtrate flows into the collecting tubule from where, more water is reabsorbed into the bloodstream, antidiuretic hormone influences the amount of water to be reabsorbed depending on the osmotic pressure of the blood, the glomerular filtrate from several collecting tubules now referred to as urine, is emptied into the collecting duct, the urine passes through pyramid, pelvis, and ureter into the bladder, where it is stored for some time, the sphincter on the urethra relaxes to allow urine to be released from the body. 8. Explain the role of the following hormones during homeostasis.